Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today I'm at this end of the studio because I'm looking at some software. And the software I'm looking at is the UAD X Opal Morphing Synth from Universal Audio. Now, the, why is this sort of, this is kind of a new thing because it's part of the Spark collection. But what they are is a collection of curated plugins which are based on a subscription. Uh, we've got uh, included plugins and instruments, compressors, a lot of their real sort of classic bread and butter stuff. Not all of it, reverbs and delays, preamps, EQ and tape. And also we've got some instruments. Now, as well as instruments that have been available for a little while on the Lunar platform, such as the Ravel Grand, the Moog Mini Moog, and the Waterfall is a new one, which is available for Lunar and for uh, the UADX Spark. We've got the Opal Morphing Synthesizer, and that's what we're looking at here. That's running in Logic at the moment. It's Mac only for now, uh, but PC is coming, and uh, these run in uh, emulation under Rosetta 2. But it's actually quite a big deal because when UAD first started, uh, the this incredibly low latency they were getting on their uh, bespoke DSP platform meant that, from our point of view, we think, oh, these could make some really good uh, virtual instruments. They didn't really go there, and now they have. The thing about the Opal is that rather than emulation, this is their own take on a synthesizer. So they were very keen for me to have a look at it because I'm a synth guy, and this is their first sort of bespoke synthesizer that's built. So here it is, it's a three oscillator synth with a white noise generator as well. And each of the oscillators can be either a wavetable or this analog hybrid model oscillator, which allows you to morph between the waves or jump between them. So on the wavetables, if I hit wavetable, you can see there's quite a big list of individual waves uh, categorized by digital synth, complex vocal. At the moment, there's no user waveforms, but that may be something that comes along in the future. Uh, I've also got a pair of uh, filters. Now these filters are the sort of morphing part. Uh, these guys also morph, but they morph in the round, uh, you know, from A to B, so from top to bottom. Whereas the filters, rather interesting, if we go to the filter section, each of the sections, as you can see, has a little sort of focus button. These are continually variable in terms of filter shape or filter mode. And this really means that we've got some quite interesting potential here because we can modulate all the way around and there's no sort of end point. Uh, a pair of LFOs and a pair of sort of multi-segment function generator slash step sequencer type things. Then we've got output effects, uh, which actually sound pretty tasty. Three envelopes, filter, aux, and amplitude envelope, uh, plus uh, an insert effect on the filter, which we'll come onto that a little bit later. So maybe the first thing I should do is just play through a few sounds. So, so opening this window here opens up the patch browser, and we've got all the usual kind of type, genre, presets. There's also user presets. Maybe if I start with some user presets, because these are ones that I made, and one thing I must say, I mean, there are while there are some great presets in here and plenty of them, it's actually much more fun to make your own on this, and this is what I found anyway, but I will flip through a few of those. So we'll start with this kind of thing that I call Big Pad. So... Really nice... Velocity sensitive. And I'm just using... Uh, I think I'm just using uh, two oscillators here. that upper octave on velocity. Nice. So if I just throw this one up as well, this one shows the morphing oscillator, uh, the morphing filters. And I'm using LFO, let me see if we go to the matrix, I forgot to mention the matrix, I've got two using this, so LFO1 is modulating the filter mode and the pan. You see if I bring the resonance up. And also these are in four pole mode, we can go continually variable between one pole filter and a four pole filter. Let's try this guy. This has got a bit of uh, wave sequencing. Just using the analog waves. Uh, 
And I'm th in this one, I'm actually just using the oscillator too. If I turn straight through with no filter. Anyhow, that's a couple of sounds. Uh, so no, let's just get back onto the interface and we'll go through the individual bits. Um, so yeah, each oscillator has a, way, a range of plus or minus 48 semitones, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, let me just bring up the default patch because I can show you another uh, cool feature that this has got. Defaulter, uh, let's keep that open. So if I just turn this down, we've got a straight sawtooth. Going straight through the filter, but um, we've got fine tune as well. Uh, we've got this thing, these things called os ensemble, and what they do is effectively clone each of the oscillators uh, in any mode. Clone detune. So we've got that across all of the oscillators. So if I now go back to, let's just bring up this one as well. Maybe make that. Make that an octave higher. Bring a bit of this ensemble in. Maybe uh, drop that filter down. Then maybe the third oscillator, which has also got a sub, a separate level. Yeah, quite nice actually. Um, so the filter is, well, I will get onto the filter, but so the oscillators have that uh, ability to do this. There's also a couple of other things that they do, which is worth looking at. I'll just open this up and take the ensembles off, and we'll again listen to a sawtooth. Right, so now uh, if we look in the oscillator section, we've got the ability to FM between oscillator two and oscillator one. Which brings in a whole set of extra com complex harmonics. Take that down. But then also we've got the ability to amplitude modulate between oscillator three and oscillator two. So, that's quite high, so let's take the sub down and just go, let's go to a square wave, rather helpfully we can just flip straight to it. Let's just go to a square wave, we can flip straight to it. So we've got the ability to do some quite hardcore cross-modulation uh, in audio rate as well. So just have a couple more sounds before we get into the filter. This is a, a bunch of sawtooths. Sawtooth. Crank that reverb up. This is lovely, it's just a really... Vibraphone. Add a bit more sub oscillator. It's already got a load of... A bit of room, add some more metallic hammer. Yeah, not very synthy, but you know, nice. Here's something that demonstrates the multi segment sequencer. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's uh, take a look at the filter because uh, that's always a good start. <laughs>
let's put a bit of envelope on this. Maybe create a little bit more. Release. And we'll start to bring some resonance in. That does have some nice harmonics. Let's bring it down to, a, let's try a, a two pole. See what that does to the harmonic. Yeah. Dare I say sing song harmonics? I think I just did. But the real big deal about this filter is, if we take the resonance and this back down again, is this continually morphable shape, which goes through a variety of different uh, filter shapes. So we're starting off with uh, low pass, then up to band to then high pass and then and then a notch filter and this is kind of the one of the interesting things because we can continually variate this across around 360 degrees so if I go to the matrix and I just kind of go well let's just go for an LFO and we'll do that to VCF uh, mode Let's slow it down a bit and give it a bit more action and slow it down a bit more and then we can look, we can see what that's actually, oh it's still a bit fast isn't it, let's just go slow. So we're getting some of that kind of uh, go behind sort of morphing. Interesting. I think it has quite an interesting flavour uh, and I like the fact that we've got the harmonics. Let's just do a quick test actually. If I just take uh, that matrix off, let's just take that off and then uh, we'll go into a fully high pass mode, bring the resonance up, see if we get what sort of harmonics we get because that's always a... Some decent low harmonics. It doesn't have that quite sa that same sort of sing song that you can get on some high pass filters. Uh, but of course, we've got dual modes here, so we can go one into another. Uh, if we go back to the filter, we go one into another, we can set them to be series or parallel. We can also, via the mixer, set them to be one or the other or both or through. So we get quite a lot of filter routing possibilities, uh, which is pretty cool. I'll take that resonance down and go back to a We've got a low pass filter. And we don't get a kind of drive, as far as I can tell. The amount of drive into the filter doesn't really give us any change in resonance, so that's a bit of a shame, but it's still actually quite a nice filter. And that, that the fact that we can morph all the way around it's actually quite a powerful effect. Uh, another thing that we should mention is we've got these uh, additional, this sort of insert effects between the filters, uh, which is actually also pretty cool. So if we go distortion, then these controls become. Let's take the envelope amount to naught. So got uh, overdrive, fold, wave fold is pretty useful because it essentially, if we go, if we turn this into a uh, just a, a sine wave, then we've effectively got kind of the beginnings of a complex oscillator there, and that will work. Even will it work on a square wave? Because folds not. Yeah, we get an effect, but uh, square wave wave folding is apparently quite hard to do in analog. <laughs> anyway, um, the other thing, the other, there's a couple of other uh, filter modes here. And this one is, I thought was really interesting. Um, sorry, filter effects. And these are the combs, which kind of create this resonance, this resonator. So. Yeah. 
bit of there was a there was a filter i forget what type it was called on the uh the system 8 and that had this kind of interesting resonating um uh, frequencies that enabled you to get this almost like static flanging and it's the same on this so if we come back we'll just have a look at the comb plus and the comb minus we're almost able to get these kind of formant effects but then of course if we want we can we could get uh, the low pass filter involved and take some of that uh, ping off. And of course, all of these are, so if we wanted to, we could actually add a source and we could take uh, an LFO and send that to, I believe we can send it to the filter insert effects, parameter one, two, and three, so we can modulate those and get some really interesting things going on as well. Speaking of modulation, uh, we've also got uh, two LFOs. These are fairly standard LFOs, uh, variable shape and rates with tilt and, uh, uh, and some really interesting potential here. It's, as far as I can tell, it's one per, it's, these are global, so you don't get uh, anything specific in terms of uh, one per voice. But if we were to send this to the filter, we should be able to see how fast it goes. Let's just go up here and... So not like right into audio rate, but with the other uh, amplitude and FM between the oscillators, we've got some good, uh, already got some good additional harmonics and stuff we can get there. Um, the next thing we should look at is the uh, multi-seg. Now these are more like function generators and we can, we've can we got a load of presets here and we can create uh, just regular LFO style ones or we can create complex envelopes which have multi-stage. We can have kind of various different curves, we can have sample and whole, we can have uh, sequence stepped, which is what we've seen before for some of the other presets. These are per voice, so if we want, every time we trigger, we can have these running per voice. So if we now uh, go, and uh, let's just go to a straight uh, LFO sign, uh, we'll get the matrix, and rather than the, there, we'll use the uh, multi-seg one, make sure we're looping, Trigger on note on, so that won't be free running. These are we could, these are looping as well. So this is envelope one, so we can have it just as one hit or a loop. But if we come back out to the filter, I've got that uh, now mapped to the filter frequency. So so it cascades. So we've got one per voice basically. Nice. So yeah, we've got quite a lot of modulation sources here. Uh, final bit of uh, effectage or uh, parameter is we can uh, we can set the voice count. Goes up to twelve, uh, or we can go in mono and we can set the various different uh, other global parameters here. Finally, uh, output effects, as we've heard on a lot of these presets, there's some really nice output effects. In fact, probably the best thing for me to do is just play a few more sounds, and then you'll get an idea of it. this thing. So this looks like it's pinging the alien verb, so if we then... Which is a very interesting reverb effect. I think this is using some sort of resonant frequencies. Let's have a look at this one. Looks like... This is... modulating the filter shape. Very jet-like. Quiet 
type sounds. Let's have a look at some bass ones, shall we? Uh, let's try some bass sounds. So. Definitely a, bit, a fair bit of thump down there. There's definitely a lot of girth to these. Yep, nice. Let's have a look at some uh, pad stuff. Oh, we don't want bass. We'll just come out and we'll have a look at some pad sounds. Let's see what we've got going on there. What's, what's this one? Yeah, some interesting stuff going on there, a bit of noise. Uh, what's this one? Close Encounter. Maybe this is going to be an ARP 2600. What I particularly like is, I don't know if you can see there, but on uh, all of the kind of the mod matrix stuff, uh, which I'm not entirely sure what the limit of uh, slots is, it doesn't seem to say anywhere, but you can see they've added, uh, um, if you look at the uh, mixer section, you've added on the pitch bend, on the mod wheel, you know, you can see what's actually happening in terms of mod. And on the oscillators, you can see the, the, the area and the, the amount and the speed of travel. I think that's quite a nice touch on the UI because there are some, I remember some, some are a little more obscure, but it's nice to be able to see what's going on here in terms of modulation. I mean, even if maybe it doesn't move the actual parameter, it shows an indicator of what's going on. That's really helpful while programming. up on that. Oh, that's nice. are pretty integrated into this and that's to be expected from most modern synths but on the whole it's definitely got a kind of vibe to it i like the sounds i mean i think that maybe you're going to get more out of it and tailor it more to your own needs if you program your own sounds perhaps there's a couple of things i would like to see i'd like to be able to see some kind of stereo spread on the oscillators so we can get a bit more stereo without having to add effects that would be kind of nice but for a first synth and also an original synth uh, from the team. I think this is actually pretty impressive. Opal is available now. You can find out more about it at spark.uaudio.com. Uh, this is the page here. It's part of the subscription service. You get a 14 day free trial, including pluggers and instruments, compressors, teletronics, etc., reverbs and delays, preamps, EQ and tape, and the instruments themselves, the Opal Morphing Synthesizer, of course, Ravel Grand Piano, Moog Mini Moog, which is actually endorsed by Moog, and the Waterfall B3, which is another new instrument. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. That was the UADX Opal Morphing Synthesizer. See you next time.